Want to make your home network more secure? <sighs> Of course. These nine steps make it very easy to do so. Earlier this year, the NSA published an information sheet about how to secure your home network. But why does this matter? Well, the NSA oftentimes is on the forefront of any kind of attacks. So they often put out warnings about current hacks or threats that we as consumers should be aware of. But if you did not read it, I don't blame you because it was uh, it was pretty boring. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Here are my favorite tips from their PSA, but also some of my own. Check out the other videos on my channel to start your own solid security foundation. This video is sponsored by Delete Me, so make sure to stick around for a great discount and find out how you can scrub your data from the internet the easy way. Get on with it! Number one. First off, smart home devices like smart doorbells, locks, cameras, even smart TVs, lights, plugs, etc., etc., are often the weakest security link in your home network. If one of those products can easily be hacked, then a hacker could pivot from your weak smart home product to the rest of your network. After watching this video, make sure to go back to my smart home security tips video and run through those steps to ensure that all those devices on your network are also secure. Using hardware mic mutes or video shade covers on these devices can also prevent eavesdropping if they do get hacked. Number two, use an updated and modern operating system. If you have a computer at home, use something like Apple's Mac OS or Microsoft's Windows or even a Linux distro. While Windows is uh, the biggest culprit of security vulnerabilities that we have here, you can set your operating system to auto update in the middle of the night when you aren't using your PC. If you prefer to not auto update, which I understand some people don't, set a reminder on your calendar to check for updates once a month or so. These companies push patches out really often to fix security issues, so using an old no longer supported operating system can leave a huge opening for an attacker. You can do the same thing for your iPad or your Android tablet, for your laptop, your smartphone, or smart home devices. Updating frequently is the best way, one of the best ways to protect your network from getting compromised. Also, if you are finding this video helpful and you wanna see more, a subscribe would mean so much to me. It will also help you find similar videos because YouTube will pop them up in your home tab to easily watch. Number three, updating your web browser helps with any security threats that target this software as well. Since cookie-based attacks have been on the rise, Logging out of online accounts now and then and closing your web browser completely can also prevent malicious actors from having access to your accounts. Number four is all about enabling antivirus and anti-malware security software wherever possible. Now in newer operating systems, sometimes this is offered for free through the operating system itself. So you don't have to download a third-party antivirus program. But if you prefer a third-party option or if you need more protection, Plenty of these exist for consumer devices. Personally, I use the built-in AV for my OS, but I also use anti-malware software on top of that, and I have good online security hygiene to spot potential issues before they ever reach my device. A holistic approach to security is important, as just implementing one of these tips, like just downloading AV and hoping and praying that it helps you, but ignoring the others, that's not gonna protect you in the long run. And number five, speaking of those holistic approaches, approaches, here's a step that you can take online to protect your data, which can prevent phishing campaigns from using your personal data against you. Because you can protect your home network all day long, but if your data is already online too, it's very easy for somebody to find it. Data broker websites make our data easily searchable, it's publicly available, anybody can go to Google and find something and click into a data broker website. That's data like your full name, your home address, your phone number, your spouse's name, your spouse's birthday, your birthday. I could go on and on. Email addresses, everything is listed on these data brokers. And yes, you can totally go to each of those sites one by one. You can find your data. You can request that they remove it, but that could take days and even months to do because there are so many data brokers out there. There are actually hundreds of them. Yeah, they exist. There's so many of them. It's ridiculous. So I signed up for Delete Me many, many years ago as a paid customer. They take the hassle and the stress off of my shoulders. Delete Me sends those opt-outs so I don't have to do it myself. And they keep on checking back again and again at those data broker websites to make sure that any data found is scrubbed because 
data brokers are known to put your information back up there after you have sent opt out. So let Delete Me do it for you. <laughs> if you're sus about trusting a company to do this work for you, Delete Me does provide contact information for questions. And they also have detailed public information about how they protect your data themselves. So if you are ready to take control over your data online, or maybe you are looking for a smart Christmas gift for somebody who needs better online security, especially like their phone number and email address and their home address. I mean, I don't want that information online. Check out joindeleteme.com slash Morse code to get 20% off any of their consumer plans with my coupon code, which is snubs, which will automatically apply at checkout via that link. That's joindeleteme.com slash Morse code and 20% off with the coupon code snubs, S-N-U-B-S. -S. Thank you so much to Delete Me for sponsoring this episode. I love your company. You guys are great. Number six, while we are on the subject of updating, go find your modem and router if you haven't seen them in a few years. That little box that feeds your house internet, do not ignore them after you set them up for the first time. Log into the administrator account. Make sure you aren't using a reused or default password. Upgrade the settings to WPA3. Turn on any firewall recommendations and check for updates or firmware updates or patches, whatever they call it in your Wi-Fi router. Turn off remote administrative privileges or access if you never need to log into your devices whenever you're away from home. Better yet, check with your ISP to see if you can buy a third party Wi-Fi router and modem for your account, especially if you're renting one from them. ISPs will commonly give you devices that are kind of slow and poorly secured. So using your own router and modem can offer better security on top of saving you money. Number seven, create separate Wi-Fi networks for your work machines or your computers, your smart devices, and your guest network. This is what I do on my modem and router setup, and that ensures that guests won't infect my computers with anything they might bring into the network, and smart devices are segmented away on their own network. They could stay away. This creates a barrier between each group of devices and it can stop an attacker before they reach your entire setup. Number eight, use the administrator account on your computer only for installing updates like software updates, firmware updates and patches or for network maintenance. Use a regular user account for day-to-day -day stuff like web browsing or entertainment and gaming. If an attacker does get access to your machine while you are logged into a user account, this can help prevent them from accessing or making malicious changes to your network or your data. Some hacks do occur that allow attackers to level up from a user to admin and gain persistent access to that admin account, but not all hacks work the same. So this can be an effective protection, but not the only one that you should be taking. And number nine, reboot your devices from time to time to trigger updates if these aren't automatic. This can also help with any malware or virus implants that do not live on through a power off cycle. Some of them do, and we call those persistence, but if a virus or malware can't survive a power cycle, then this can remove an infection before it lives on. Just keep in mind that it got there somehow in the first place. So implementing the rest of this video and the one I previously did is very important. If you are going on vacation, turn off anything that you won't need to have access to while you're gone as well. Now, while these are just some of the networking tips the NSA has recommended, I've got so many more that you can watch on my channel and I've linked their full info sheet down below in case you wanna read it as well. Thanks for watching, bye y'all.